Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. And today I want to talk a little bit about the downside of claiming certain residencies. Something that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about. It is an argument for having multiple residencies and it is something that you should be aware of. I think especially increasingly as you maybe venture out from the country that you're in into another part of the world that maybe you don't understand as well as as we have kind of increasing autonomy over our own financial assets, mainly in the form of crypto. So we're gonna talk about that today. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell. If you like this video, please share it with your friends. And if you'd like help with relocating abroad, figuring out where to go, how to get set up there, getting residencies, citizenships, et cetera, please reach out to us, you can book a call, calendly.com forward slash Michael Dash Rosmer, link in the description below, or send a message to our websites, offshorecitizen.net and offshorecapitalist.com. All right, so uh, what I'm talking about here is essentially the risk of getting onto kidnapping or other violent uh, lists because of exposure of data of your financial assets, okay? So let me just give a quick little analogy to this. Uh, we were discussing with someone about uh, going to one of the crypto conferences in Colombia. And the reality is Colombia is less safe than Dubai. Let's, uh, let's put it that way. Um, obviously, you know, more safe than it was at one point in time. And you know, there's a spectrum of safety out there. But the possibility that if you're in a country like Colombia or Honduras or you know, wherever else, and somebody knows that you are, say, wealthy and in crypto, for example, that they will pass that information to the wrong source, some place that you don't really want, and that that could create a risk to your physical safety or the physical safety of people you care about, uh, is a non-zero possibility, right? So I think it's a w worth being aware of that risk. And where this came up, uh, I heard of recently, was with respect to the common reporting standard. So for those who aren't familiar, the common reporting standard is a standard that basically all countries, banks, every country that you typically want to bank in uh, are subscribed to. And the way this works is that once a year, they report the financial uh, the value of accounts that they are being held in your name to your country of residence. Okay. Now imagine, and this is apparently something that has started happening in Mexico. So in Mexico, do you think that that information is private? No, no, of course not. You know, the ability to gain access to uh, the reporting information for the common reporting standard is really high. The people who are, you know, cartels and mafia and this sort of thing, uh, you know, that's just, the, the, the ability to keep that privacy is not there. This is something that kind of goes back a long ways. I remember talking to people when I was first getting into this business about bank secrecy. And there's like on the laws what you have for bank secrecy and then there's the culture of bank secrecy. And so if you're in Andorra or you're in Switzerland or in Liechtenstein or something like that, they have a culture of discretion. They have a culture of secrecy. And so people just don't disclose that information. Whereas if you're in some Caribbean island, it's a lot of gossip culture. It's a lot of, you know, people talking about, oh, you know, we have this, we have that, you know, we have a client who, et cetera. And so your ability to extract that information is different. Now multiply that out when you have corruption and, you know, cartels, et cetera. And now all of a sudden somebody inside can say, hey, let me pay somebody to give me access to the list of people with assets over a million dollars, over $10 million or whatever. You really don't want your information being reported there. This is a strong argument just for privacy in general, right? And so, of course, you know, the one thing is, listen, if you're going to go to a crypto conference in some part of the world where there's a reasonable risk, uh, probably just keep quiet about the fact that this is what you've got going on and probably don't act flashy, etc. That's probably just a good rule of thumb. But beyond that, when you're looking at places to get residencies, I think there's some wisdom in having a residency that you can point to for the purposes of banking that is not going to put you at risk. 
We'll see how this plays out over time. I suspect that over time, just like there's some issues happening in Europe now with banks and GDPR, I always find it really funny when governments bring in regulations and those regulations get at odds with each other. So what's happening in Europe in some cases now is banks aren't able to give uh, bank statements because of the fact that those that information will violate the GDPR regulations and they're getting fined for this. It's a ridiculous, it's ridiculous, but this sort of thing is happening. And so similarly, I think you're probably gonna find that some people are in a situation where it's actually dangerous that their information is out there and that this desire to have transparency and put information out and you know, maybe you think, oh, hey, it's going to a government, so it's gonna be you know, locked away and safe, and then you discover, oh, in that country, it's really not. And there's consequences. We'll see how this plays out, but I think that over time, it's almost inevitably a concern, and we'll see where it, it drives you. That's something where, I think if I was living in Mexico, I think it's great to get Mexican residency, and I think it's great to spend time in some of these countries and maybe base yourself there. But personally, I would want to have a different residency that I could give to banks so that my information was reported to that country instead of this country. And it's not something that I hear people talking a lot about. I don't want to kind of make people super afraid or paranoid or something like that. But I do think it's something you should be aware of because realistically, if you don't have safety, like what do you have, honestly? Like maybe you live in the most wonderful place in the world, but if you have to have bulletproof cars and guards and things like that, how great is that? Not so great. I had a period of time where we had security guards all the time around in, uh, in one of the countries that I was spending some time in, and it felt kind of cool. You're like, oh, hey, great, you know, the security person goes to the washroom with you, and you go to some place, and they arrange things in advance, and you go through, and, you know, but, you know, realistically, we weren't actually at much physical risk. That's better, <laughs> you know. Do I want to be in a position where I'm physically at risk? No. Do I want my family or my loved ones to be at physical risk? No, absolutely not. This is terrible. So I think it's a reason to have multiple residencies uh, to protect yourself via your information, totally independent of anything else. So anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments below, and I will look forward to seeing you on the next video.